Hi, I'm psychology professor Bruce Heinrichs. In this video, you will learn a little bit about projective tests, which are used to measure personality. So in this video, you'll learn about the Rorschach inkblot test and the TAT, the thematic apperception test. Psychologists use personality tests really a lot. We have thousands of personality tests. Personality tests are divided into two groups. Structured tests have a structure. They give you some uh, statements or some questions that you respond to with a set of choices like multiple choice or a Likert scale. Really a lot, not so much, about average, not very much at all, really not a lot. So you have a Likert scale, or you have multiple choice, or you have true false. These are called structured tests because you don't get to give, you're not allowed to give any answer you want. You have to give one of the answers that we have offered to you. The test has a structure. So all the tests that we've learned about so far are structured tests. The Myers-Briggs, the 16PF, the Big Five, the MMPI, those are all structured tests. There's a different category called projective tests. The theory here is that people are allowed to give any answer they want to some ambiguous, some unclear stimulus. We give them an unclear stimulus like an ink blot, and we say, tell us about this ink blot. Say anything you want. So these are open-ended. You can give any answer you want on a projective test, but the theory is that your answer will be a projection of you. It will be a projection of your personality, that your answer will tell us not about the ink blot or whatever stimulus we present, but it'll tell us about you as a personality. The most famous and most used projective test, of course, structured tests are much more common. They're much better. They have higher reliability, higher validity. The structured tests like the MMPI, but some people still like to use projective tests. Some psychiatrists, some psychologists use projective tests. And the most commonly used of the projective test is called the Rorschach inkblot test. It was developed by a man named Hermann Rorschach, who was a psychiatrist from Switzerland. He developed this test in 1920, and then he died. So he never got to see how famous it became. This became a very famous test. Uh, in the Rorschach inkblot test, a person looks at ink blots and then reacts to them. And from their reactions, we think we're learning about the person's personality. There's an old joke in psychology. A uh, guy takes a, a Rorschach test, looks at the first ink blot and says, looks like two people having sex. Looks at the second ink blot and says, wow, looks like four people having sex. Looks at the third ink blot and says, wow, it's a sex orgy. And the psychologist or psychiatrist stops the test and says, um, boy, uh, you certainly seem to have sex on your mind. And the guy says, me? They're your pictures. Ha ha, this joke tells us the meaning of a projective test. When you give your response to a stimulus, we think your response is about you, not about the stimulus. Here's the first card in the Rorschach inkblot test. It's a very simple card, not very challenging at all. Most people don't have much of an emotional reaction to it. Uh, they usually say something like it's a bat or it's a butterfly or a moth. We use this first um, card just to get people relaxed and used to talking about the cards. Uh, and we pay attention to their emotional response, maybe what part of the card they, they respond to. Some people respond to only half of the, the ink blot. Uh, they have brain damage. Some people respond only to the white areas, not the gray areas. They also have brain damage. So we can tell from where the person responds or what kind of emotional response they have that what is going on with them. This is the third card in the Rorschach ink blot test. Uh, and it is almost always seen as uh, perceived as two people doing something. Maybe they're going bowling or maybe they're having a chat. 
Uh, so we use this card to find out how people relate to social interactions. So how do people respond to uh, people uh, or images of people in, in some social interaction? Finally, one more example of the inkblot test. Here's card four, which is very dark and shadowy, kind of kind of deep. It, almost everyone perceives it as masculine, like an authority figure, like your boss or your father or a dictator. In fact, depressed people often start crying or get emotional when they see this and they might remember abuse uh, in their in their background in their history, um, people will say it's an animal hide, a skin or a rug. But we don't care so much what they say it is. We care about their emotional reaction and what they want to talk about, what issues they want to talk about when they see this card. Okay, that gives you some idea of the Rorschach test. I'm going to show you one more projective test in the next slides. The Rorschach ink blood test is so famous that there are even many cartoons about it. Here's three funny cartoons on the left. The uh, family sitting down at the table at Rorschach's parents' house and Rorschach has spilled his milk and the father says, I distinctly see a camel wrestling with a butterfly. And the mother says, I hate to say this, but if you can't tell it's a woman holding up a pineapple, then I feel sorry for you, I really do. That's Rorschach's parents. And then on the right, the Rorschach test through the decades, the idea that uh, what a Rorschach inkblot is perceived to be could change depending upon the era. So in the 1960s, it looks like a bomb. In the 2010s, it looks like a tree, the same inkblot. And then finally, the last one, it looks like a blood stain. I would pre-soak it in cold water for 30 minutes. So this is Martha Stewart visiting her psychoanalyst. Okay. Another projective test that is commonly used is called the TAT. Don't call it the TAT. If you call it the TAT, don't say you're in my class. We don't call it TAT. We call it the TAT. You can call it the TAT test if you want, but the second T stands for test. The whole name of this test is the thematic apperception test. We never call it that. We call it the TAT. In this test, people look at a drawing that's sort of unclear, that always has people in it. So here's a couple examples. And then they're asked to write or tell a story about the drawing. We think that the story that they tell us or that they write will tell us about them, that the story will reveal their motivations, their emotions, their, the way they think about the world, the way they think about their relationships. So we think the story that you write or tell is really about you, not about the drawing. And therefore the drawings are made very ambiguous, very unclear. Look at the drawing on the left. It's unclear if that person in the front is a man or a woman, for example. So someone might say, well, this is a man who is doing something. Or someone might say, this is a woman who is doing something. I once had a student come up to me after class uh, and referred to the image on the left here and said, you know that picture you showed us of the woman and her mother? Well, no place does it say that's a woman and her mother. That is something that was a projection of my student. So the whole point of the TAT is to, is to look at the responses that the people give, the stories they tell, and, and try to figure out something about the person. Is this a reliable test? Not really. Is this a valid test? Not really. Other tests are much better, but this kind of test might give you information that you can't get in other ways. It's more rich, more quality, high quality information. Okay, that's the end of these slides. So a projective test tries to measure personality in a different way than structured tests. A projective test, we show the person a stimulus that is unclear, and we ask them to respond to it. And we assume that their response is about them. We learn something about them from, from how they respond. 
is this very reliable or valid? No, not really. These are not very reliable tests, not very accurate. Well, why use them? Well, it gives you a different quality of information uh, and it allows a, a psychologist or a psychiatrist to start a conversation with someone because you can talk about the stimulus and talk about what feelings they have or what memories they have when they see that stimulus. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that and learned a little bit about projective tests. Be sure to check out my other videos. My channel on YouTube is called Brucey. See you later. Bye.